Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So I haven't done any OptiPrint videos in a while, so I'm going to work on doing a couple of those for the next several videos. Uh, today I'm going to focus on the bed level visualizer. Um, it's a really cool plugin. It'll help you get your bed level and it really will help show you any higher low points in the bed. Uh, just to point out any places where it might be warped or whatnot. And um, I'm going to use a couple examples. I'm going to uh, use my main printer here with the thicker glass bed to kind of show you how the uh, glass itself can help level things out to a point. And then I'm going to use my other Ender 3 that I have back there, which just has the magnetic build plate. Uh, so that kind of will be more of a true uh, picture of what the bed will look like. So I'm going to do this like I do most of my videos. I'm going to start off by walking you through the install, kind of showing you what you need to know to get started, and then uh, going into a couple of tips and tricks along the way. Now I do make the assumption that you already have OptiPrint installed. If you don't, I will link to a video that I did um, for that install process below. And if you have any questions about it, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. I'll help you out as much as I can. And if you haven't already, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm here at my computer. I've got OctoPrint up. If you haven't already installed OctoPrint, I created a full install guide uh, that I'll link to below. Uh, I would recommend starting there first. It'll walk you through the entire install process start to finish. Uh, but once you have it up, the first thing I want to make sure you do is go into settings here and then go down to software update and make sure that you uh, do a check for updates and just make sure everything is up to date. That's going to make sure you're running the latest uh, code across the board. All right. So now for the bed visualizer plugin, we need to uh, do a couple things here. So let's go ahead and first search for it. I'll show you what we have to do. So just go back into settings. Then go to Plugin Manager and Get More, and then just search for Bed. And then here we have Bed Level Visualizer. Uh, I want to open up their homepage because there's something I want to point out really quick. If you scroll down on the GitHub account under the instructions or known issues, uh, there's something that we have to install manually here first. Uh, so what we want to do is go ahead and open a connection or SSH connection to our Octopi. Uh, so to do that, let's go ahead and download Putty. I'll link to this in the description below, but I've got the link here. Uh, then I'm just going to go ahead and get the 64-bit version and just download and install that. So just, as you can see here, it downloaded. So we just want to double click that to install it. And then the default settings are fine across the board. and then go ahead and finish that. And then we want to launch Putty. So if you just go to your start menu, type in Putty, you'll see it. All right, once we have that, we can go ahead and close the Putty download page and then go back over to this. Um, you need to get your URL for Octoprint. So most likely you're gonna be octopi.local. In this scenario, I'm Octopi2, so I'm just going to copy that over and go to Putty and just paste that in uh, just like that, and then just hit Open. And then if you haven't connected to this with SSH before, it's going to ask you to verify the key. Uh, just hit Yes. It's just verifying that you know what you're connecting to. All right, so the default username and password, unless you changed it, is going to be Pi and Raspberry. So username is pi, and then password is raspberry, all lowercase. And if you changed it yourself, you should know what you put in there. So it'd be whatever account you have set up. All right, now here is what we have to install. If we go back over to GitHub, just this one line right here, we'll just copy this, and then go back over to our SSH console, and just paste that in. It's gonna ask you for the password again which is just the Raspberry that you logged in with. And then it's gonna go through and install this. If you don't have it installed, it's gonna prompt you for the install. You just hit Y for yes. Uh, I've gone through a couple tests on this, so I already have it here. Uh, but this is what you would see if it's already installed. If you wanna just do that again afterwards, uh, just hit the same thing. It's gonna verify that it is in fact installed. 
Uh, so if it's not, it's going to prompt you to install it. If it is, you'll see this where it shows that it is installed, but you want to do that first. And then once that's done, you just go ahead and exit out. And then let's go back over to Octopi and then we can install this plugin. So we just go back and hit install and it's going to run through the install process. Now, depending upon the version of Raspberry Pi you have, um, it might take longer than um, a couple seconds. It could take up to several minutes sometimes. Uh, I think here they're saying if you have this specific thing plugged in or installed, it can be up to 30 minutes. Uh, I haven't seen that, but I'm sure in some examples that it can. Uh, I'm running a Raspberry Pi 4, so it does have additional memory. Uh, if you have a Pi Zero or something like that, you might have issues. So I would recommend at least having a Pi 3. Right, but if we go back over, we're just going to want to hit close here. And then it's prompting to restart. So just go ahead and restart that. And then just proceed. And then when it's done, you'll see, please reload. Just go ahead and hit reload. All right, now to verify that the plugin is there, we can just see that they added this drop down here. If we click on it, we'll see bed visualizer. Uh, and then in order to get started, you have to uh, give it the necessary G code command. So if we, if we click on settings here, it's going to open up the settings for the plugin. And then if we click uh, right here, it's going to give us examples. So depending upon what you have set up for your uh, bed leveling kit, uh, you're probably going to go with one of these two, unless you have the specific uh, printers or firmware. Uh, I'm going to go with bilinear because I'm using the bilinear bed leveling in the firmware. If you're in question, just go ahead and go with this one. So just copy this, then go back over to Octoprint and just paste it in here and then hit save. Now we want to connect to our printer. I'm going to show you two examples. Um, both of them are going to be Ender 3 Pros, but one of them is with the glass bed and the other one is with the standard magnetic build plate. All right, so just want to hit connect. Now, I haven't actually ran this on here yet, uh, but uh, two more things I want to point out. A, uh, it looks level, and if you go through and uh, manually level it with the paper, it seems okay, but I have a BL touch, so it might be a little bit off. Uh, but the second thing is make sure that your printer is plugged in and connected to power, uh, not just powered off of the Raspberry Pi, because it has to heat the build plate. So you're not going to get enough power through the Raspberry Pi to heat the build plate, and it's going to error out. Um, but as you can see here, you can see all the temperatures and stuff, but let's go back to the plugin and then just hit update mesh now, and it's going to go through and do our mesh. So if I go over to control, I've got just a Raspberry Pi camera on it. You'll see that it's going to, uh, go through auto home and then run through the mesh that I have set up in the firmware, which is going to be a three by three grid. In some cases, if your bed is warped, uh, you might want to change that grid. All right, so right now, it's starting to heat the bed, as you can see here. Uh, it's going to heat it up to 60. You want to make sure that your bed is up to temperature to get the most accurate readings. So that's already uh, set up in the G-code. And then if you wanted to see what's being done on the printer, you can go over to Terminal. And then it's going to show you everything that is happening on the printer. And you can also send additional G-code commands here as well. And then you can see right here where it went from 59 to 60. Uh, that's your bed temperature. And then it's just showing weight uh, before, before it actually got up to temperature. And now it's starting the G29 command. So if we go over to control, we can see that it's going to go to our first point and then start to do the probes. All right, now that it finished, uh, we can go back over to the plugin and you can actually see the nice graphical example of how the bed is. You can see where all the points basically are um, just by going over like that. So even though visually it looked like it was level and with uh, just going through and doing the paper level, it seemed pretty close. Um, but it's clear based on this that it's actually not quite very level. So we're off on the back right by 0.725 and the front left is low by 0 0.608 uh, so this can definitely use some improvements now if you have a bl touch you might ask why does it matter uh, because it will account for the differences well you want to try to keep it as level as you can just to get the best surface and it makes the bl touch work less so the bl touch is going to adjust the z-axis as it's printing to account for the difference 
uh, but it's only going to be able to do so much. While this is still within range, uh, it definitely has a lot of improvements I can make just to make sure that we have a good starting point and just to put less stress on the steppers and make it so that the software is doing less. Now I'm going to do the same test here with my other Ender 3, uh, but one thing I did want to point out here is these are all pretty consistent across the board, so I'm not seeing any major warps. Uh, if you had a low point here as an example, you might see this color changing significantly or one of the colors on the probes or around the probe changing significantly if the bed is warped. But with the thick uh, glass build plate that's on that printer, I think it's accounting for any of the warps that might actually be on the bed, which is why I want to show it to you with the other printer as well. So I'm going to pause the recording and then go swap that out. All right, guys, so I've got my other printer connected. You can see here that it has the standard magnetic build plate, and I'm just going to go ahead and connect to that really quick. And then I am running the bug fix version of Marlin, so it's going to give me this error. Um, or just more of an info, uh, but you can ignore that. It's basically just saying that they can't guarantee everything is going to work. All right, but let's go over to Bed Visualizer and kick off a new mesh. It's going to basically do the same thing as before. It's going to auto home the printer, heat the bed up to 60 degrees, and then go through and set the mesh. So I'm going to let that go ahead and run, and then uh, we'll talk about the results when it's done. All right, so that finished. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we'll just go over to Bed Visualizer. And wow, that's pretty bad. So uh, I knew that I had the BL Touch on it, so I just tried to get a rough level. Didn't really care how true to the level it was. Um, but I didn't think it would be this bad. So this tool is really good at pointing out where the problem spots are. I mean, really, that back left should be raised and the front right should be lowered. That'll help a decent bit. And I can't tell if there are any warps on this build plate right now just because of how off it is. Uh, but once you start getting things more true to level, you're going to be able to see any imperfections in the build plate. So the next steps here would be uh, to go make some manual adjustments to the leveling and then kick off the mesh again to get the recordings just to see how close to true level you can get it. Uh, but this tool does a really good job at really showing you what the issues are and where they are. And without it, I think it'll be much more difficult to get things truly level. It's a free plugin, so if you're already using Octoprint, this tool is great. As you can see, it points out any flaws that you do have. And as you can see, there's over a two millimeter difference here from the back left to the front right. Now with the BL Touch, the prints were coming out okay just because it was accounting for that. But you're making those steppers work a lot more in order to uh, level things out. So if you uh, have the bed as close to level as you can, uh, it's going to put a lot less strain on the printer and the steppers, uh, allowing the printer to last longer. But that was a quick overview I had for the bed visualizer. If you have any questions, go and leave a comment below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. All right, so that covers the process of installing the bed level visualizer plugin. Uh, it's a pretty neat plugin. It helps you really see what your bed's doing. I know it does have some dependencies, so if you don't have any type of auto bed leveling kit, you're really going to want to just stick with a standard mesh and go through and set it up that way. Um, I'll probably do a video on setting up a manual mesh uh, pretty soon. I think that that would be worthwhile for those of you who don't have the BL Touch or any other type of auto bed leveling kits. Um, but overall, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions about the process or would like to see any other videos, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.